Welcome. We have fantasy bold predictions. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why there was a fucking circle. But bold predictions, you know, very exciting. The people demanded. No, they didn't. But I'm just going to pretend that the people demanded it because that's what I like to say. But they want to hear bold predictions. We each have one. Conan's is a lot more detailed than mine as always. But we will bring you two bold predictions for fantasy football 2023. It's going to be very exciting. Conan, tell the people about your bold prediction. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, around this time last year, I went on one of our friends' podcasts, and my bold prediction for them was that Miami would have two top 12 wide receivers in Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell, which they weren't being drafted as so. And, well, we're here now a year later. Tyree Kill was the wide receiver two. Jalen Waddell was the wide receiver eight. I'd say that's a successful bold prediction right there. So, I think... Kind of keeping it in that in that same boat, I'm going to predict this year that eh, maybe it's a little cop out, but Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and Quentin Johnson, two of those three will finish as top 12 wide receivers in points per game this year. So that's my bold prediction. I mean, if we look at just Keenan and Mike Williams last year, Keenan was wide receiver 11 in points per game when he was healthy. Mike Williams, wide receiver 21 in points per game when healthy. So not too far of a stretch. And really the only difference between last year and this year, or one of the biggest differences at least, is when or maybe if, uh, hopefully if, uh, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, one of those guys gets injured. They actually have a capable third wide receiver in a guy they drafted very highly in the first round in Johnston instead of just feeding an unhealthy amount of targets to guys like Josh Palmer and DeAndre Carter, who should never be receiving that many targets in an NFL game. Yeah, well, I like it because I love Quinton Johnston. I wish I could say I thought it was going to happen. It's not, unfortunately, uh, unless the only way it could happen, in my opinion, is if Mike Williams specifically missed the entire year. Then it could happen. Then I think it could happen with Keenan Allen and Quentin Johnson. Rookie Quentin Johnson finishing that high, though. That's kind of a stretch. I wish. I think the Mike Williams show is kind of over. If it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. I, I think I'm kind of done with Mike Williams. I don't have him ranked very high. Keenan Allen I actually still like. I agree with your take that he was really good. I do always say don't catch a falling knife. And I heard some people, they'll remain nameless. We can look them. Some people say that Keenan Allen has top five upside. That's a stretch for me. I think Quentin Johnson coming in is going to mean that we're not going to have the vacuum that you described last year. Top five upside is a huge stretch. I, I like Keenan Allen as a value, but I'm not going to have any of him because I rank him at wide receiver 21. Mike Williams, I have at 31 and Quentin Johnston at uh, 38. So I kind of like all three. But Quentin Johnson is going to be the only one I have at those prices. And I so I love the take in that respect in that I, I like Quentin Johnson as a possibility if there's an injury or a struggle in play for Mike Williams, which has happened every year. There's been either an injury or a struggle in play for Mike Williams every year of his six-year career. It could happen. Two of them finishing in the top 12, I think is almost impossible unless one of them disappears. I think that's basically what you're saying is that one of the three of them is going to vanish off the of planet Earth. Then it's possible, but otherwise it really isn't. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. So, I mean, the one time that Mike Williams didn't actually, you know, lose a significant amount of his season to injury, that was actually a year where Keenan Allen and Mike Williams both did finish in the top 12. Um, so we've actually seen it before. Uh, and obviously we're a couple years removed now. And so it will be difficult, but I do think there's just certain things that just point to a, a more explosive and just better season out of the entire team. I mean, Herbert, by his, by his standards in the first two years, like he had a down year, he had a hundred less points than the year before he had even, he had even 50 less points than his rookie season. And so, I mean, I think there's a few things that kind of go into it. I think one of the biggest things we kind of brush off is that 
he fractured his rib cartilage and was basically dealing with that from week two on like the rest of the year, you could see it just hindering him and his inability and just to, to get the ball down deep, but also just like, you could see him like wincing sometimes when he's taking these hits and when he's releasing the ball, where I think we're, we're past that. Now he's had the whole, you know, rest of the season, the off season to recover. And I just think, I mean, that's one big part of it where I do think his health and just his overall play is going to be back up to his closer to the first two years. So as you said, you were right about Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. Why were you right? Why did that happen? Because they got everything. To have two wide receivers in the top 12, they had to get everything. Everything. They mm-hmm. got like, I think it was like 70% of the team. It was a very, very high number. It's like ungodly number. That's not going to happen on this team. It's just not. Mm-hmm. I actually, on the fly, I didn't come up with this beforehand, but I actually came up with what a good hot take, not good, but like a more likely hot take would have been. If you had said all three of them finish in the top 30, that's actually a lot more likely. It's a lot more likely. Mm-hmm. That would be very rare, very rare for one team to have top three, top 30 wide receivers. The Rams, uh, the McVay Rams with Cooks, Woods, and Cup did it a couple of times. It is very rare, though. So the Bengals might have done it one year. It's very rare. I think that that's, mm-hmm. that's actually very possible because I don't have it ranked that far away from that. But... All of them, the two of them finishing in the top 12 is hard unless two of them get everything. If you're splitting targets among three players, it's almost impossible to have two top 12 wide receivers. Most of the time, it's been on teams where the Thielen Diggs Vikings, they got almost everything. It, it's mm-hmm. usually that, that type of split. So that's that's the reason why I think it's almost impossible unless one of them disappears. But that, I, I that, do that love, actually... I love the other part of your take where Justin Herbert has a huge bounce back. He's excellent, uh, has great fantasy weapons around him. I like that part. I would just have phrased my hot take differently. Mm-hmm. That, that makes sense. So that, that actually made me think of something funny where I, I, I believe Teddy Bridgewater had three top 30 wide receivers that one year in Carolina. It's because uh, <laughs> Curtis Samuel had a lot of the production on the ground. That's another yeah. way to get there, is if one of the Absolutely. wide receivers has a significant amount of production as a runner. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, this is more so like that's why I I put in like points per game rather than overall year end finish, because I do think it's very unlikely that two of them finish year end like season finish as a top 12. But when they're healthy, hopefully for not just two games or four games in the season, I do think there's a chance that, you know, they could be high up in the points per game. But but my last point, I guess, going on, you know, the team and overall, like why I expect them to just do better and have potentially these explosive weapons finishing high in fantasy is, you know, they brought in Kellen Moore, who has always been praised for his creative and high powered offenses over in Dallas. And I mean, if you look at his numbers, they absolutely tell that story where besides one down year in 2022, he's had a top eight passing offense every year. He's been the offensive coordinator. Uh, He's been top six and overall just team point differential in three of the four years that he's been an offensive coordinator. Um, And so I do think like the the path is there for that team to really open things up more. Um, And if you listen to, you know, Keenan Allen's quote the other day, he said, yeah, no, we're we're going to be going deep. And so I I do think like I I think the rib injury that Herbert had, I think that was a bigger factor in his inability to throw deep than I think people give him credit. I mean, if you just look at his yards per attempt, I think you could tell that same story, too, where. He was at he was 25th in yards per temp last year, 6.8 yards. Not not very good, um, not very far. But you know he was over 7.2 each of his first two years. I think that yards per temp will just go back up there. And so I think I think we'll find out. You know that his he's passed the rib injury. He's got a new offensive coordinator that's in town that is more creative, opens things up, um, and. So I, I just expect a big bounce back, like you said, from Herbert, but also some of these uh, wide receiver weapons to give us great years. Yeah, well, I, I hope so. I mean, I love Justin Herbert. So we'll we'll, we'll see if all that happens. I, I think it's going to be very exciting to watch, especially how QJ uh, kind of develops as a rookie. But I, I think we'll, my, my allegedly hot take, it's not going to be hot for people watching this show, but it's, it's hot <laughs> for compared to the rankings is I think that there's actually a solid chance that Sam Laporta finishes as a tight end one as a rookie. Now, we know from watching any of my past content, I hate bold predictions because people don't get the right message from them. 
I can't, I don't think, I look through my ranks. I don't think I have any rank that would qualify as a bold prediction. I don't think any of my ranks, if I actually just read the rank, you would say, well, that's crazy. I don't think I have that. So this was the closest thing that I had, which is that I don't even have Sam Laporta ranked as tight end one. I haven't ranked tight end 15. Now, that's still high compared to rankings in ADP. But Mm -hmm. if he stays healthy, I think he could be a tight end one. I don't think it's that hard. If I rank him at tight end 15, all he has to do is stay healthy and he'll probably be a tight end one. Because, you know, there's always going to be a few guys who get hurt. Jameson Williams is going to miss the first six games of suspension. And I think what happened last year is you saw Greg Dulcich and Kate Auden step Chig Okonkwo, especially Dulcich and Okonkwo, step in to target vacuums and play as rookies. And they're not nearly as good prospects as Laporta. They don't have the draft capital of Laporta. And they don't have the as strong of an offense that they're stepping into as Laporta. So he has an opportunity to do it. Now, you know, I'm not scared of teammates Brock Wright, Shane Zilstra, and James Mitchell. Nor am I scared of the Lions wide receiver two for the first six weeks, Marvin Jones. I just think that he has a good chance to do it. Now, would I necessarily draft him in redraft? Probably not. Because that's saying he does it week one. And you're probably only going to draft one tight end in redraft. So in redraft, I'd probably just draft someone else because you, I don't want to draft two tight ends. I need someone I'm going to play in my starting lineup week one. And I'd rather draft someone like Chigakonkwo or Dulcich, who has a little bit more experience, Evan Ingram. And then I can work out tight end streamers. They're dropped all the time. You need to cover bye weeks. There are injuries. There are so many problems. Tight ends end up on the waiver wire. So I'm not sure I draft him in redraft. But since I'm mostly a dynasty show, there are a lot of people who already had a tight end and have Sam Laporta on their roster with a, a Dalton Schultz or maybe with an Evan Ingram or a David Njoku. And I would just say that don't count out Sam Laporta as a rookie by the middle of the year, even six, ga- you know, f- four or five games in. If he can just show something in those first six weeks, he could maintain a role even after Jamison Williams comes back. Plus, there's no competition on the tight end depth chart, and they drafted him so high. So I would just look at him as someone. I, I wouldn't. The narrative of rookie tight ends doing nothing is way overplayed. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. But it, I know it's yeah. not a super hot take, but, you know, I just want to offer it. No, I mean, I, I love the take, though, because, you know, I, I, I agree it's not – that hot where you know finishing as a tight end one what does he need you know five i know he doesn't need to do that much. <laughs> but no but like the path is there like you said like i mean obviously jamison williams gone the first six weeks but you know marvin jones might be the wide receiver too or it might be you know josh reynolds or khalif Raymond. either way you're not that scared like it's not guys that are going to deter samuel porta from being involved and so i think you you phrase it perfectly where I'm not going to really draft him, but I think he'll be available after a couple weeks on the waiver wire as well. And I think if he can show a little bit of something to, to kind of build off of the first few weeks, I think there's going to be a great path for him to, you know, end the season off strong and furthermore, just retain and even boost that value for next year and going forward. Yeah, but I appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, thanks everyone for watching or premiere or afterwards. And uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notifications bell. And we will see you all on the next video. Peace out. Thank you.